midnight. Enish Moore. Stepping out of the pub was akin to being blindfolded. The sky was dark, as though swept clear of stars by the rough wind blowing off the sea. There was no landscape, only night. Daniel walked forward with certainty. I kept pace but looked back several times, reassured by the light from the pub, a square of gold that looked not like a window but a portal, suspended in midair. Too soon, we left it behind. I was 26 years old, and I'd gone to Galway for a writer's conference. Long before the trip was planned, I'd visited a psychic on Long Island, as one does. <laughs> she had red hair and looked as Irish as I do. She told me I would get the chance to go to Ireland. And when you do, she said, ghosts will walk with you. After the conference, I stayed an extra week to travel. One morning, my friend and I took the ferry from Ross Seville to Inishmore, the largest of the three Aran Islands off the coast of Galway. We were lucky to snag a room at a bed and breakfast, given that it was August and still very much tourist season. That night, she and I went out to the pub where we met Daniel and his friend. Daniel and I were talking for some time before we realized the two of them had disappeared. Once we understood they weren't coming back, he offered to walk me to my B&B. I said I wasn't sure if I could find it. Daniel laughed. He'd grown up on Inishmore, and he knew every inch of it. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, where any hour that you try, you can see your hand in front of your face. Brooklyn, where, after dark, is the living you're wary of, not the dead. It was the year 2000, pre-obligatory cell phone, so I had no flashlight with me. As my eyes adjusted, some of the blackness thinned to gray, and I was able to discern the curve of the road. But Daniel pointed left to a field. This way, he said, starting across, I followed. Occasionally, we called our friends' names, Bridget, Martin, but there was no answer. I was not drunk. This is important to understand. <laughs> I'd had two pints, maybe three. <laughs> but Guinness is not strong, and it's very filling. It's a light meal, really. <laughs> Daniel and I traipsed through the grass. I'm not sure what made me look back. There was no sound but the whisper of the ocean far below. But suddenly, I glanced over my shoulder and saw a body hanging from a tree. White, the way the moon is white, not opaque. It had just enough luster for me to distinguish its shape. Shoulders, a head to the side, and a rope that went from the neck to the tree branch above. I blinked once, then again, expecting the shape to become a rock formation, white with lichen. But it was a man, the ghost of a man. What I did not do, scream, run, ask my companion if he saw it too, afraid that he would say he certainly did, and then tell me the man's name and when he died. Instead, I kept walking. Each time I looked back, the body remained, swinging slightly in a current of salty air, not of my time, I supposed, but his. Years later, I returned to the Long Island Psychic. At one point, she sat across from me, her eyes moving back and forth, and then she asked, was there a hanging? Did somebody hang himself? I nodded. She could not quite get his name. It might begin with a vowel. Vowels were tricky. So were W's. She squinted, cocked her head. It might be William, she said. It might be, I agreed. William. 